Perfect. So uh, the idea is we want to make sure that these sessions are uh, on demand available for you if you want to rewatch again. Uh, and we have Steve, Stephen coming as one of the speakers. Um, I cannot see uh, Laura yet. Please uh, raise your hand, Laura, if you are here. Perfect. So this session will be very uh, interactive. We will have lots of questions, etc. I will also share uh, a few slides, uh, Laura as well. So we will have uh, actually quite a bit of focus on uh, two, three things. One is uh, first uh, the um, concept scoping and how you can validate your ideas. And then also we will make sure that uh, you are on the right track. In, if you have a project idea, feel free to share here. Uh, it's like the safe space that we can talk. And the idea is that we want to make sure that uh, we are uh, giving the right direction to you. Of course, we are not uh, the one that we can represent jury here, but we have gone through tons of hackathons, I would say. And Steve is probably one of the few people who actually and uh, not only gone through hackathons but he also win a couple of them so uh, there is no better person than steve who can actually um, talk about that um he's coming he's already on the thing i think i give permission to him so he's joining in a few minutes um okay he's coming Great. Hey, Steve. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How are well, you? Doing well. Doing well. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. We have a very long day today because we have back-to-back -back sessions. Uh, we did a very nice info session, team formation, amazing photon, one-hour uh, session that who, whoever wants to ambitiously do a multiplayer on a hackathon, now, uh, of course, we want to go back to basics and then uh, maybe go a little bit of uh, the concept validation or what works, what doesn't, what makes you such a successful hacker in the previous hackers. So maybe hackathons, maybe you can give some kind of like a, a tips as well. Uh, we can go into detail, but uh, maybe if you want to start a little introduction of yourself and then uh, because we want to really make it quite interactive and purely practical advice so maybe you can already start um, uh, talking about uh, what are the tips that you can give to, to people uh, as well and anyone who wants to ask questions please please use q a tab because this is the only tab that we can check uh, chat sometimes get quite crowded so just to make sure that we are uh, on the same page steve stage is yours i will certainly also join the dialogue, but just let's hear from you first. What are the basic tips that you can give? Sure thing. Yeah, so I'll first start off with the introduction. Um, as Ferhan said, my name is Steven Rogers. I own a small VR game studio called Fourth Wall Breakers, where we've been working on several different projects. I'm currently working on uh, Coaster Mania, which is a mixed reality game that you create roller coasters in, and then Pencil, which is a mixed reality app that you uh, draw uh, and learn how to draw um and pencil uh which is a good segue actually came out of uh, one of meta's hackathons and was one of the the winning projects from it um so i've, I've participated uh in a couple of hackathons specifically that meta's hosted one was uh last year in march uh, at menlo park um, where we also won that one uh, with a title called Submersed. It was a, a game where um, it's mixed reality and uh, essentially your room has has uh, sunk to the bottom of the ocean. You have uh, water flooding in and you have to plug up the holes by smacking your, your walls with tape. Um, and then... Uh, more recently, and uh, I think it was March of this year, uh, participated in the one in New York and one with Pencil. Um, 
yeah, so uh, that that's a little bit about me. Uh, I guess, Farhan, if you want to lead me into like, yeah, what... exactly. Yeah. Do we have do we have the dev post page or something of pencil? Uh, uh, that's a good you, question. Did you post it, or you post it completely a different because it's meta platform? Uh, meta well, it, it is in dev post. Um, if it's helpful, I can also share the Definitely. trailer. Um, uh, just I so think can... I think what would be helpful is oh, actually. Sure. Uh, Actually, uh, is there any slides? Are there any slides there, or is it just? Um, uh, yeah, I think we me... created some slides. Give me one second to okay. pull those out, and I can. Okay, uh... because uh, I think the good thing oh. is, uh, I know that you have created other slides as well after that because pencil got really big afterwards. But um, uh, tell us like how how the idea started and how you make it much more mature enough to make it to the hackathon. And how you utilized your very, very small, a few days, short period of time. Uh, I think these kind of details will be really helpful for hackers, right? Uh, please, anyone who wants to uh, ask questions, uh, I'm also looking. Uh, yeah. yeah, we will, we will, we will so... talk a little bit about the pitch video as well. Like uh, Aaron is coming from Gorillazilla trailer creator, which Steve uh, did the game and uh, uh developed the game and uh, around did the uh, whole trailer of it so uh around will talk about that so the video part we will make it a little bit later but at least uh, understanding how an idea turns into a hackathon idea how hackathon idea turns into actually hackathon project and then beyond maybe you can give us a little Certainly. bit of the evolution of uh, from like a tiniest idea to um, how it becomes something big yeah so so pencil the idea came about about honestly a year ago uh like in october of last year um where i was just trying to come up with different ideas of new projects to work on and um prior to that i had worked on a app called brushwork uh where it's a painting simulator very similar to like apps like vermilion or painting vr um, and one of the things that we wanted to do a little differently was having lessons that you can actually learn how to draw, not just having an open space, but actually having a uh, guided direction. Um, so the idea of like lessons had been stuck in my mind for a little bit and uh, trying to figure out, I guess, the best place to, uh, to try it out. Um, but I think one of the things for hackathons and specifically is... Uh, trying to come up with something that is very, very achievable within just a couple of days. Um, I think one of the pitfalls that I've seen at hackathons is that uh, kind of the ambition uh, behind uh, some of the projects, which I, I'm all for ambition and uh, creating, pushing uh, the bar in, in terms of like what you can make. Um, but keeping in mind that like there's only three four days, uh, sometimes even less, um, and knowing what you can kind of deliver within that time. So for Pencil specifically, uh, we knew that uh, at, at its basic core, uh, all you're doing is you have um, a, a piece of paper and some form of image that gets overlaid onto your piece of paper. Um, and then we just move through different images. So um in, in terms of like the basic uh components of, of everything it was pretty easy to build and once you have kind of like this mvp, MVP. core uh, structure for the app that's where you have so much more time to make it polished and make it uh, really stand out um compared to if you're going to work on a mmo or something you only have you know, you have four days to create just the basic structure um, and and not focus as much on the polish. Um, so yeah, I guess this is a, a video of, of the app in action. Um, so as you can see, it, it overlays essentially an image and then you can click next to go through the different steps uh, of, of drawing an apple. Um, so we were able to get essentially the minimum viable product of that done really on the first day. Uh, so that gave us a lot of time to um, kind of polish it up. And then we decided we had so much time, we were going to create a second mode. 
And this was a free draw where you could uh, drag and drop different 3D models onto a stage. And that gets projected onto your piece of paper. Um, yeah, and uh, that's kind of how, how Pencil became uh, to be. Um, yeah, Maybe I, I, I can ask a few questions. Um, so sure. there are many drawing apps out there, right? Like you are not the first drawing app. You cannot claim that, but it is MR, right? So um, I think the critical thing maybe we should really um, spotlight today is we are trying to achieve something on our existing room or physical world if we are wanting to do something in memory, right? So um, pencil is a little bit different, right? Because it's not like a, it's not like paintbrush, right? So uh, uh, it's uh, a little bit different. So would you like to tell a little bit about like this MR element that, uh, of course, you know MR very well before even uh, creating pencil, but uh, how the MR idea creation mindset works. So you are actually seamlessly merging a physical or a normal life activity to en enhance it uh, with a headset, right? Because uh, as we discussed before in the info session as well, what makes me as an end user to put this very, very, very heavy headset on my face and then make every second worth it, right? that I'm still uh, using it and I'm still benefiting from this, uh, carrying this headset, right? So we should always think like that and how I'm utilizing the camera and the uh, pass-through opportunity that I can see my room or I can understand my uh, physical environment. So would you like right. to a little bit share about this MR yeah. idea creation mindset rather than VR? Certainly. So I think most ideas uh, for uh, hackathons and specifically if you want to come up with a successful mixed reality app, it really needs to be built for mixed reality first. Um, and kind of the best way to validate it is, you know, if it can be done somewhere else, like in VR even or uh, on flat screen, then, you know, maybe there, there's a better idea out there uh, that showcases really like the power of mixed reality um so for example i think uh utilizing what uh with mixed reality you get kind of a visual of your space um but like why why is it important to actually have your room visible and why um why do you want to be in your room to to do the certain thing um so kind of giving context behind uh, your space. And I think that's one of the, the highlights of the presence platform that, mix, uh, that Meta has available for mixed reality is that they give you so much information already um, about the space uh, by giving labels of around your furniture, being able to tell what is a desk, what is storage, also being able to have a mesh of your environment uh, where you can spawn stuff in smartly throughout the space um and really kind of like making your space come alive uh versus um you know i think there there's apps out there that um start off as vr and then just add pass through as like an afterthought um and you know sometimes those are successful apps and those work well um but uh, I, I really, truly believe that, uh, you know, if you start with the concept of like, okay, I'm in mixed reality, I have all the space around me, what can I use with the space? Um, that's what's going to really make it compelling. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, another example, so for the previous hackathon with Submersed, one of the things that we found in mixed reality is that uh, it really opens up the ability for room scale experiences. Um, previously in VR, uh, you really don't feel comfortable moving around your space, even with the Guardian setup. Like there's something in your mind that really wants you to stop moving around. Um, but as soon as pass through is turned on, you can freely move around the space. And I think that's one of the um, things that I'd like to see a lot more is just kind of utilizing being able to walk. Um, freely rather than uh, um, rather than having to have some form of locomotion. 
Um, and in Submersed, uh, we also utilize the ability to like having tactile feedback uh, of the walls and the furniture where we knew where everything is and we could spawn it on the walls where you can use your hands to, to touch. Um, and I think that's another element that's really only possible um, in mixed reality. If you can't really see where you're touching, you're not going to want to put your hand out there. Um, but yeah, just come think of different clever ways that like why, what, what elevates mixed reality above um, any other uh, medium uh, for, for your specific app. Perfect, perfect. So uh, we have quite a bit of questions. Uh, Notion link we will share. Um, what would you prefer a technically ambitious app, the rough around the edges or a more standard application? We will come to that question. I have actually a very interesting slide to show. And any advice on how much resources to put on the pitch video? Again, we will come to the video part in 10 or 20 minutes, I would say. Uh, but Lara, would you like to maybe uh, I can share a screen as well. Maybe you can uh, introduce yourself as well. And then we can uh, a little bit go to uh, the practical advice part that we can list some of the stuff in our uh, on our slides. And would you like to introduce yourself, Lara? Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm an XR developer and I am a successfully graduated from XR Bootcamp from the last cohort uh, in June. Uh, <laughs> that's probably it. <laughs> maybe maybe okay. you can mention about the Lingo space place because I'm uh, now yeah, opening sure. it. Uh, this is really like, I think, one of the best prototypes I've created during the bootcamp. Uh, it's actually uh, like the principle is uh, object detection and then labeling objects around you and translating them to various languages. Uh, this prototype was created uh, during like a week and then polished uh, for the meta hackathon uh, within three days Table. with some of my peers. Table. Uh, we we had we had a, a session with Pearson uh, two hours ago. So um, they already mentioned about language learning. Of course, it's one of the important um, uh, categories of this hackathon. So um, and keep in mind that everyone uh, they did that without AI kits, right? So that's also another thing that they they had to do that by themselves. Thankfully, now we have two AI kits, which we will announce the details in uh, one hour 45 minutes in at 7 p.m uh, around 7 p.m so if you can join us around 7 p.m uh, you will see the ai kit but uh, would you like to a little bit share uh, Table. like we asked steve as well like what makes you to uh, come up with this idea and how it becomes from idea to a hackathon idea oh uh, to me the idea occurred when oh uh, i saw meta uh, tease scene scripting and that actually it will be able to recognize a lot of objects and me as being like uh, triangle from like childhood <laughs> uh, I'm interested in learning languages and also I was thinking about like if I travel to Japan how cool it would be like if you understand the surroundings around you and somehow this together uh, I came up with this idea to use your surroundings to actually learn a language. Uh, there are like, yeah. uh, I mean, maybe I can tell from like a meta perspective, right? When I look at okay. this or from a jury perspective, uh, there are so many things here inside this project that is like a, a so much big chance to 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 really be uh, welcomed by the jury uh, let me share a few one is of course you are using a mixed reality but not only you are using mixed reality you are also using almost like some kind of like an object detection physical understanding scene understanding even uh, you are anchoring uh, ui elements to objects so these are already like uh, the top mr capabilities that meta wants us to use right so that's one of the stuff on top of that there is also ai part of it 
um, and I can use that at home. Um, it can be even maybe in the future it can be multiplayer, etc. So there are tons of opportunities here. So I think uh, we can tell that, of course, the quality and implementation part can be different. Uh, I know that you only worked only a couple of days to finish that. Uh, so you, you didn't have so much time. Uh, so uh, I think from a from a project idea and um, the capabilities perspective, uh, this is one of the few examples that I have seen that welcomes all the capabilities in the best way that Meta and the uh, jury would expect to have. Of course, uh, this is just an inspiration, but just to give you that what kind of capabilities can actually directly be uh, embedded. But we also shouldn't think that, okay, let me embed this capability and then uh, make it work inside. This also doesn't work, right? Every capability here is actually making sense, right? That's also very valuable um, as well. So uh, do you have anything to add, uh, Lara or Steve? Do you have any uh, maybe tips uh, based on Lingua's place? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it looks really polished, honestly, from just the UI flow and everything. And I think uh, this is kind of tying into the question about uh, working on a technically ambitious app versus um, a perfectly implemented one. Um, and my advice on that really is, um, I think the polish, like, it's an important piece of uh, the, the hack. But really, the the main thing that judges are looking for is kind of the impact that your app can have in the real world. Um, you know, if you create something that is technically ambitious, um, but you know is only really useful for you know five ten people, then um, I think judges are are gonna kind of see that and think, okay, well, it. They they achieve something really cool here, but uh, you know it, it doesn't have legs to to grow further, and that's kind of what I would consider when you're coming up with ideas is um, figure out where you can have the most effect. Um, and yeah, I think games are are kind of in that ambiguous space where everyone likes to play games, but uh, yeah. but um, is it if we're there's a high chance apps, that it's being uh, uh, already seen on the store or app lab or horizon store right that's also another thing because especially vr games mr games true but vr games it's really uh, already like uh, people are developing game vr games for quite a while uh, but uh, what steve mentioned is actually directly fitting to this right this jury criteria so compelling concept so um maybe uh, one question here impact yes you mentioned how you are making um quick scan of pre uh, previously developed, published, similar apps to yours. Do you have any criteria? I mean, we have listed all of these three items from previous hackathons, side quest, and store, uh, or app lab now, both of them combined. So do you have any uh, other uh, tips that you can give that when I have an idea, I can quickly go back to previously done similar apps to see how yeah. unique I am? I think, I mean, uh, for myself, I usually just, if I have a concept um, for for an app, say it was like for a karaoke app or something like that, um, I would generally try to check SideQuest first because that's where all the like um, App Lab apps are, are pretty much held and anything that hasn't necessarily met the quality to get onto the store yet. And kind of get inspiration from there, even, you know, if there are apps that are out there that kind of do the same thing. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that's like a stopping point uh, for an idea, um, but you can at least look at it as uh, knowledge of like um, where maybe some stumble points are for for uh, these concepts. Um and, you know, if there's enough of a market of uh, apps that already do the same thing, then maybe that is an indication to kind of look elsewhere um, for, for a different idea. Um, but yeah, generally SideQuest is uh, the, the main thing that I look at first to see if there's a VR mixed reality app that is already doing the same thing. And then after that, you know, if there isn't and you still have that idea, I would also check 
um, Steam or like itch.io or um, other games that aren't VR uh, to get inspiration um, for how how they tackle it in the not VR space and uh, figure out how you can kind of uh, turn it on its head um, in, in VR. Perfect, perfect. Um, yeah, um, many people are asking, can we start hacking before the hackathon? The answer is no, unfortunately, but you can start brainstorming, ideating, whatever Steve actually mentioned that you can check, scan the uh, environment. So definitely this is something that you can do, no problem. Uh, you just need to make sure that uh, uh, you don't start coding or start creating assets before the hackathon. That's very important. Uh, you can also look at the SDKs. You can learn about the SDKs. You can go through the Udemy course, which we will share in one hour. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can do all of this, but you cannot start the game or app itself. Unfortunately, you only have two days for that. Um, very important, interesting uh, question, right? Which we are seeing here. What would you prefer? Is it an ambitious app, etc.? I love this image. I think Steve, you love as well. Uh, we discussed about this. So yeah. um, let's talk about what is a prototype because it is directly also related with um, scoping. Keep in mind that including sleep, you only have 48 hours. You also need to sleep, maybe a few hours at least, right? Let's say you have you have maximum maximum you have 40 hours, right? when you take out sleeping time or eating time if you want to really be a bionic human uh, in this hackathon let's say i have maximum 40 hours what can i do with within these 40 hours as a person and as a team right scoping so how would you like to maybe um, describe this like how i will understand the depth of my prototype or the number of features how i can scope nicely so i can finish the this 40 hours of sprint on time and still build something impactful and interesting. Steve, stage is yours. Yeah, uh, well, I think this uh, image is definitely interesting and I think you kind of have to look at it for a little bit to kind of really understand uh, what it's saying. Um, but at its core, uh, really there's kind of three different pillars of direction that um, a app or a prototype can really go in. And there's the idea of depth, where let's say you have a game um, depth in this, in my idea is that like, these are all the different levels of the game. Um, this is how long you can actually play the game. This is how much content you actually have. Um, then there's polish, which, you know, is the kind of the UI UX, the, the visual aspect of the app, making it really stand out um, and look uh, appealing. And then there's features, and this is uh, kind of related to depth, but not necessarily where this is the uh, the core functionality of your app and what potentially could make it compelling. Um, uh, but I, I think there's definitely kind of, you need a nice balance of everything. Um, but out of all these things, I think most jury and judges realize that you only have a limited amount of time. And also, the judges only have a limited amount of time to try out your app. Um, so out of all of these, I would definitely encourage stay more in the polish feature side over the depth because they're more than likely, you know, you're not going to have that much time to actually um, achieve uh, the a core whole entire game. Um, but being able to really showcase what, um, why the idea is, is uh, compelling and how it can be applied, I think is. And is and important. keep in mind that this Polish part is the quality implementation criteria, right? So there's actually 33% impact of the quality implementation here. The UI UX fidelity is a seamless enough. Uh, the the, the uh, user feedback, especially for example, you saw lingua space, right? Even in that uh, app, there are still more to do uh, to make uh, the uh, all the frames and all the outlines of the object that you are looking much more uh, clear, right? So the more you can do, better. But uh, one important question, Steve, look at the Pencil app today, right? Which you are about to uh, about to publish soon, right? As far as we know. Fingers crossed, yes. Yeah. Okay, fingers yeah. crossed. So when you look at the number of features today, Pencil, right? 
versus the number of pitchers on the hackathon finished hackathon let i don't know how many i don't know if you have the numbers now but i know what is the number percent but when you look at like let's say if it is 10 percent of the today's features or you are maybe doing much more polish etc how do you decide which feature makes sense to pick even though you have a huge feature list on your back backlog right yeah. so how you are deciding that which one is best that is much more impactful for that one minute of two minutes of demo time or video time that i will show to the jury yeah i i think um for for me it's really kind of again I, i keep going back to this but showing what makes your app compelling the most um You know, uh, I think we have a couple of different features in our app uh, that we added recently where you can like, you can import your own images. You can do, um, you have like Sketchfab support where you can import models and a bunch of different stuff like that. And though those are really compelling ideas, they're not necessarily really showing the core experience of the app. They're just additional features that for uh, core users. Um, And I think that's uh, kind of the delineator is kind of figuring out what is something that, you know, if you're going to look at it for just two minutes, that really sells the idea of what you're trying to build um, and focus on on that first. Um, so for us, it was one lesson uh, where now we have about 40 or 50, uh, but uh, creating just one core lesson that feels really good and has uh, the direction versus creating a selection of, of different ones um and then yeah just creating really the core minimum viable product wonderful wonderful and uh shapes team is here as well we will go to the uh, part that on the iteration and rapid prototyping part so uh how we will make sure that it is actually impactful by actually prototyping right and then we have a very nice super power there which is Shapes XR 2.0. I want to really state that it's not only Shapes XR, it's 2.0. If you only uh, tried Shapes in 1.0 times, uh, you will not believe uh, the difference. So uh, we will go to back to the Shapes part. Uh, so we have a few more items left. Laura, maybe, um, and Steve, and Shapes team as well. Uh, we may have some kind of like a, a little bit of brainstorming here, right? Okay, we had two, three projects that we go over with Laura and Steve, but let's go over maybe a few um, interesting uh, projects that get quite a bit of attention on the hackathons and everything. So uh, maybe Laura, would you like to share uh, your uh, approach here, your mindset quickly based on what we discuss, and then we can quickly uh, check a few examples before moving to Shapes team. Sure. Uh, so I created like, I uh, narrowed it down to like three main categories. Like, is there demand for the product? Is it possible to do uh, within the set amount of time? And can the idea sustain itself? So uh, you can ask yourself what user need problem the idea solves, like learning a new skill, enhancing everyday life or sharing interests. Um, Here, I learned by prototyping that it's better to choose one main mechanic and focus on that um, to have a finished and polished product that can actually run on Quest. Uh, then why does it make sense to develop it for the XR and not other platforms? There had to, has to be some um, unique feature uh, or why I wouldn't use just a desktop app. Uh, then I would recommend to engage with the community, um, use forums or social media to validate your uh, idea. And then keep in mind, is it if it's possible to do, uh, like uh, leverage the uh, latest features. I mean by that, for example, now as the object detection was teased, so how can I use that to elevate my idea? Or where can I use the precision of an MR stills? Um, with that goes hand in hand the uh, technical requirements. So if you aim for a meta category, 
uh, then you have to keep in mind you have to use a quest and meta present platform SDKs if you aim for the Logitech where uh, you have to really focus on the precision of the pen. Uh, yep. uh, and then what's really important, you should have the MVP within 48 hours. And so keep in mind the team capabilities and uh, time management. And then how can the idea sustain itself? How uh, how can you reach like 50,000 users and engage people to use it frequently, weekly? Uh, for now, they're like 1% of all the active users on Meta Platform is around 60,000 people. So you only need to impress uh, actually like 1% of the actual users. Uh, and if it's not uh, end users, how can you uh, how can you uh, get the attention of large brands or corporates? Uh, then you can do market research. Last point, <laughs> and here uh, identify the relevant keywords, and then you can contact searches. Here I would recommend to use uh, Gummy Search or GigaBrain. They both use. Uh, Reddit. Uh, you can search through Reddit, but AI uh, helps you summarize it. You can, um, based on theme, like what problems, like uh, you can uh, filter, for example, solution request or anger. What is their problems of your target audience? Uh, you can use Google Trends. It's something people are looking for. Um, what your idea covers. Um, yeah, and then one important is uh, to uh, have like differentiation. Uh, what is unique about your idea when you compare it to other solutions? Uh, for example, there's a lot of language learning apps uh, that use virtual environments. So I knew I don't wanna go this way and I wanna make it for MR. Uh, yeah, so also, that Exa AI is really great to look for other solutions, uh, what's on the market already. That's Amazing. Yeah, perfect, perfect uh, recap. I would say it's almost like a checklist uh, or uh, before I really push my idea. By the way, there's an idea pitch pool uh, Discord channel that you can uh, share your idea if you are looking for a team or if you want to get some feedback. Uh, that would be great. Again, ideation, completely fine. Uh, as long as you don't start the, uh, the developing the project, you can ideate, brainstorm before the hack. Uh, all time is yours. Um, as uh, Laura mentioned, Gummy Search is very interesting because on Reddit, uh, there are actually some uh, interesting people who are actually building startups by only looking at Gummy Search uh, and defi defining uh problems of people, very, very specific problems. And then they are actually finding ideas accordingly. They create some kind of like a flow about that. And why don't we, we said, why don't we use that kind of flow uh, for, for this hackathon? Uh, Dennis from our team in Notion, he will share these links with you. So you can also uh, check the video that actually used this coming search. Um, because the, the situation is this, the headsets are still heavy. We, uh, as Laura mentioned, even though we are trying to attract 1%, we don't know how many hours per week that they are using, right? So uh, we have to make sure that they are coming back to the headset. Or like what Steve did, finding a target group uh, that have never even uh, done so much in VR, but just because it is so nice to have on top of their physical or uh, normal life activity that I'm actually uh, purchasing the headset for this, which I can tell you that this is a dream ad for uh, Meta because uh, you are increasing the um, the uh, all the target group of the VR users. So that's amazing. Uh, so you have to somehow find a way that people are going back to, back to the headset uh, first time or multiple times. That's very important. So all of these things that we are trying to help is two things. One is uh, the criteria of compelling uh, idea in the jury judge criteria. And the third one is the quality uh, and implementation. All of these things will help. Um, 
So we have a few minutes left. Um, maybe Pencil, we already talk about that. Jarvis, could, could you quickly talk about Jarvis? Because Jarvis is important. He, uh, actually, he's also, and Flavio is also important because these two are AI powered, one of the first AI powered headsets which actually got attention of Meta in the previous hackathon. Maybe uh, you can quickly share, Laura, in a few minutes. Uh, yeah, uh, Jarvis is who wouldn't want to have the assistant of Iron Man, right? So it is AI powered and it uses like context awareness to uh, solve your everyday problems. Uh, you can just ask like, how can I quickest get to my work? And it will create you a 3D map and show you the path. Uh, and it dynamically uses uh, users environment. And the another one that got attention is Flavior uh, that actually used like, uh, they or use the screenshot and then they use it to recognize ingredients. And I think that's what really unique about this uh, idea. And then you just take picture of your fridge and uh, it gives you um, recipes and AI assistant is guiding you step-by-step step each way. So even beginners can mess up the these recipes. Uh, One thing maybe I can yeah, quickly yeah. add here. Um, if you want to do something AI powered and if you have some kind of like a passion or interest or an expertise, subject matter expertise on a specific topic. You can say, I'm really good at tarot reading. I'm really good at bicycle repairing. I'm really good at, I don't know, uh, making a origami, whatever, right? Uh, try to bring some physical, literally objects with you to the hackathon. Because keep in mind that we have now two superpowers uh, in Flavior, they had to build by themselves, but we are giving the superpower to you from day zero of the hackathon. This means that you don't need to deal with so much on the AI side of things. You can focus on the uh, concept, right? Let's say uh, you want to uh, build a uh, some kind of like a um, uh, like an origami uh, related uh, maybe tool, right? That you are teaching how to how to make origami, right? So you need to have enough. Uh, elements with you that you can actually utilize the AI object detection uh, and image capture so that you can either share with uh, GPT-40, which is an amazing context awareness uh, superpower, or you can uh, make it real-time computer vision object detection that you can literally track what you are actually doing on that moment, right? So both of them are at your service. Uh, in less than one and a half hour, we will have a very interesting AI kits session that the masterminds behind these AI kits will actually uh, share how you can utilize the superpower. Um, today will be long as we promised, so it's happening. So uh, I hope that it will be uh, very interesting for people who really want to utilize AI because most probably you will be the first ones uh, creating this kind of apps that makes you stand out. Perfect. I think uh, we are in good shape, uh, which means that uh, we have maybe, uh, if it's okay for Shapes team, we have a very quick uh, packaging, like trailer part that we will share with uh, Eran, if it's possible. Uh, Eran is the, uh, maybe you can also introduce yourself, but one of the uh, actually well-known uh, mixed reality um, movie producer and also trailer producer. They have an amazing uh, robot genius uh, team, I would say. Uh, so would you like to introduce yourself and give us maybe 10 minutes of like a look of how we can create the best trailer that will show, as Steve mentioned, Lara mentioned, the impact and the uh, use case? Yeah, sure, of course. So hello, every everyone. My name is Eran Meraz. I'm a filmmaker and uh, I've also worked in the uh, mixed reality industry for the last decade, decade or so. Uh, I had the pleasure to work with uh, XR Bootcamp as well, doing uh, a cool trailer for a cool app that uh, they created called Gorilla Zilla. Um, and I'm here to talk a little bit, really a little bit, and give you some pointers about 
uh, how to uh, uh, address a trailer for your app, what you need to do, what you should uh, think about while doing a trailer. Um, so let's dive in. I can share my screen, right? That's okay. Yes. All right. Give me a moment. All right. Great. Everyone can see the uh, the slideshow, right? Yes. Great. All right. So this is the tips on how to make a short hackathon uh, mixed reality trailer. Um, I, I want to start by saying something very obvious, but still extremely important. Um, trailers are super important. They are the first thing that users are going to see uh, before they even try your app. And so they play a very critical role in creating a good first impression. Um, after all, you're spending so much time and energy on developing your product and and uh, the same attention should be put in the trailer. I know so many developers who don't don't put a lot of effort or not a lot of thinking about about the trailer. And you really need to understand that most people likely will see your trailer more than they will play your game. So uh, it's really really important to get the trailer right if you want people to uh, go and play your your game app whatever it is. Okay, so how to create appealing storytelling uh, for mixed reality uh, app trailer? Um, I I I can talk about all this stuff really for like an hour, but since I only have like ten minutes, uh, I'm gonna keep it short. Um, so the first thing is again maybe obvious, but you should always try telling a story in your trailer. Now, I know that many uh, apps are not necessarily games. You don't really have a story behind it, but you should really think about it as a way to uh, uh, tell a story in a way that it's not dry. You're not just showcasing your app's features, okay? It's really important to write a script um, and use a storyboard, even if it's just small sketches, uh, but that will help you lay out your story um, and it really needs to encapsulate the style and tone of your project. If your, you know, if your game is like Gorillazilla, funny, there's a lot of fun and humor behind it. Then your trailer should be also fun and had have a lot of humor. Number two, uh, you must create a visual language. Um, I know that it's, you know, even if it's a hackathon, even if it's smaller projects. Um, you really need to think about the logo, the fonts, the artistic style. If you if you can, you should create uh, um, some art for the project. Um, all this stuff will really help packaging your uh, your trailer and also your project. Um, so it really help it will help you uh, differentiate yourself from other apps and just create something cohesive. Uh, number three. Keep it short, uh, one minute top. Um, it's really, really important. Uh, you need to understand that your viewers' uh, attention are very, very low. Um, and even though you probably want to have like two minutes or, 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 or even more, you should really stick to one minute top. Um, and uh, number four is actually really related to number three, uh, which is that your first few seconds um, five, 10 seconds should grab the viewer's attention. Again, this is because when viewers are looking at your trailer, they're probably going to focus for the first few minutes and then they're going to swipe unless there's something interesting going on. Uh, so keep, please keep that in mind. Um, number five, display your best features and visual. Um, really, don't hold back. Uh, your work needs to shine. If you have mixed reality features or AI features, really put that up front. Um, that's that's very important. But I, I just want to stress out that a lot of people, when they're building their game or app, when they're doing the trailer, they don't want to put all the good stuff in. They want, okay, I want people to play my game and then they can see all the awesome stuff that I have inside. No, don't do that. <laughs> Please 
put all the best stuff uh, up front. Uh, again, no, you know, if it's a game and you have like, I don't know, spoilers, don't spoil anything, but please put all your best features and visuals up front. Okay, number six, uh, text subtitles are key. Many viewers uh, won't play the sound. Uh, you need to understand that. So uh, please add text, add subtitles. You have no idea how important that is. Uh, please don't, don't look away, pay attention to that. Um, and number seven, call to action at the end. That means that by the end of the trailer, you should have whether it's uh, a link to your uh, game or uh, to your website or uh, some sort of a call to action because the purpose of the trailer is to get the viewer to do something, whether it's to play your game or to go to your website. You need to have that. Uh, otherwise, the viewers can view your trailer and by the end of it, they'll move on, not really understanding what you want from them. That's really important. Okay. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the challenges while recording with mixed reality. And I'm specifically talking about recording with the headset. Uh, I'm not talking about recording with, uh, 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 with like a camera or a phone to get like a third perspective. I'm really talking specifically here about recording in the headset. Um, and obviously there are a few challenges and I wanna help you get through them and understand what they are. All right, number one, lighting. So first of all, whether it's, especially if it's the Quest uh, Quest headsets, Quest 2, Quest 3, uh, the onboard uh, dynamic ca camera, uh, the, the dynamic range is not so great. That means that um, if you are filming in front of a bright window, uh, most likely you won't be able to see the inside of your house uh, uh, and the outside as well. Most likely something is going to be overexposed uh, or underexposure. So um, my best advice is, first of all, don't film in front of anything bright, too bright. Um, and also try to keep the, the, the lighting very uh, evenly lit. Um, my recommendation is to film in a room that has like big windows. Uh, you should not see the windows, but it's more about the natural light and the way that it diffuses the environment very uh, evenly. Um, so that's 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 really important. Um, number two, no sudden movements. Um, if uh, you're using your headset and you're moving too much, uh, the audience is not going to understand what they're seeing. There's also a few technical issues with that because the, the headset needs to track the environment. There's also the rolling shutter effect. So please just try to keep it as smooth as possible. Number three, the video quality. The, 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 the quality of the video that you're getting from when you're recording with your uh, headset um, it's still not great. Even if it's the Apple Vision Pro, the quality is better, but still um, uh, you, should, you should be aware that if you're like filming uh, small details, whether it's like text or something like that, it can be hard to, to see. So just if you really need to see, to show the viewers uh, small details, try to get up close, don't move too much. Um, think about the viewers. If you if you have text, give them time to read it. Um, that's about the video quality. Um, number four, choose a nice environment to record in. That's also something that I've seen in so many uh, trailers. People don't really think about the room they're filming in. And since this is most likely going to be a mixed reality experience, uh, there is a good chance that people will see your living room or wherever you're, you're filming. So just uh, make sure that uh, you know, you're not filming in a messy room or a crowded room, uh, unless you know, it's important to your project. But in general, you want to film in a controlled environment that complements your mixed reality project. Number five, don't record only the gameplay. Um, you know, when you're recording, think of your headset uh, as, as a regular camera, 
Okay, so you're not the cameraman and uh, don't only film the, the actual gameplay, try to film close-ups of your UI, uh, try following regular camera movements, whether it's like dolly in or out, panning, tilting. Um, the idea is that uh, you want to show uh, uh, different shots. You don't want to base all your trailer on the same POV shot. Uh, that will uh, make it more dynamic, more versatile. So uh, keep that in mind that when you're filming, you're also the cameraman. Um, and six, and this is so, so important, take your time when filming, okay? Uh, most people think, oh, okay, one hour, two hours, I'm done. No, trust me, it's gonna take much more than that. Um, so recording with ads, that can be obviously challenging. Um, and like I said before, you're the camera person, you're also the director and the actor. There's so much things going on uh, uh, and it's it's hard to, to get it right. So just make sure you clean your, your schedule for the day uh, or at least a few good hours, uh, not two, three more, trust me. Um, and uh, just film it over and over again do as many takes as you need try different angles and interactions uh do test view your shots before you're wrapping up the shoot that's also very important you don't want to film and then uh wrap the shoot and then go and see that there were problems uh while you were shooting um so do test while you're recording that's very important okay um we are running out filming. of time. Uh, maybe uh, uh, how many slides left? Uh, just, not uh, not more. Just this okay. one. This is the last Perfect. one. Perfect. All right, I'll, I'll go fast uh, over this one. So once you're done filming, I want to talk a little bit about the post production. I'm going to do it really fast. One uh, editing. You're going to squeeze a lot of things under one minute. So please don't over overload with features. Focus only on the essential. Keep it simple. Sound. Sound is key, whether it's music or sound effects, you should really, really uh, uh, put a, a lot of empathy on this. Use music to uh, uh, edit your, your blocks like uh, and pacing. That's really, really important. And please try to avoid upbeat tracks, uh, you know, the generic ones. We've heard it a million times. Try to uh, keep it fresh. Uh, transitions. Um, uh, since your trailer is most likely going to rely on a lot of POV shots, you can use simple graphic transition to break the uh, monochromatic editing. Um, there's like packages, really cheap packages that you can buy that will help you create some nice transitions. You can also do some transitions with your camera movement, uh, but just keep that in mind that uh, it's really important to keep it dynamic. VFX, I know that uh, most people probably don't know how to work with VFX, uh, but uh, if you do possess the skills, you should uh, consider adding some VFX on top of the footage that you got from the from the camera. Uh, you can add more details or animation. For example, with Gorilla Zilla, um, which you, you are a gorilla and you're uh, destroying buildings, uh, we wanted to add people running on the floor for, for the trailer. Uh, and that's not part of the game. And we added that in VFX. So all these little things can really spark your trailer and make it shine. Uh, and last but not least, color corrections. This is really important when working with footage from the headset. The, the video natively comes in high contrast. And uh, there are tools to help you achieve a better dynamic range in post. Um, changing the highlights and the shadows, I think that's probably the key. Uh, and I think, yeah, the last thing is links. Uh, if anyone take want to take a screenshot, I just assembled a few links for you, uh, whether it's stock footage or sound. Uh, some of them are free, some of them are not. Depends on what you're looking for. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Aran. Thank you. Um, it's very nice. Uh, to see everything in as a recap, uh, I will hand over to Shapes team uh, after sharing the Gorilla Zilla video because this is your uh, masterpiece that we I want to really share if it's okay for everyone. Just one 
it's already already only one minute, so we have we don't spend so much time. Um, let me share sound. Perfect. You can hopefully see my screen. Breaking news. The city is under complete lockdown as a monster attack. Why be a hero when it's much more exciting being Gorilla Zilla? Create chaos in your living room. Defend yourself from attackers and unleash your inner monster.